reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites, as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Verbum nahini. Ascribe to the Lord your heavenly powers. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bow down before the Lord, majestic in holiness. of the Lord upon the waters, the Lord on the immensity of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of strength. enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits as King forever. The Lord will bless his people in Exio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Gloria a Domine. 
Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Verbum Domini. Earlier last year, EWTN was made an offer they couldn't refuse, which was an all-expense-paid trip to the Holy Land for our crew to produce anything we wanted to produce. And so this past December, Father Mark, myself, and five crew members, and also those involved with the Spanish side of EWTN, went over there to the Holy Land and one of the privileged places we were able to visit was the Jordan River, and there's actually two sites that people traditionally go to on the Jordan River. You may know in the Holy Land, the northern part of Israel is very lush and fertile, and you see orchards and farms. It's green, it's beautiful, and there's a Sea of Galilee there full of fishermen still uh, doing their trade of fishing there. Father Mark and I had the opportunity to cast the nets on the starboard side on our boats, so that was, that was fun to do that. But then in the southern part of Israel, it's desert. And so we visited both sites of the Jordan River. The northern one near the Sea of Galilee, it's a very beautiful area, and there's people that will traditionally renew their baptismal vows there. And there was a group from Nigeria that was there, and they were going into the water. This is December, so it was pretty cold. But they put on white garments, and they were, these adults were going to renew their baptismal promises. And so the priest led them into the water, and there he had them renew their baptismal promises and just giving themselves wholeheartedly to God anew. And then they went under the water, they were put under the water. It's beautiful to see that. But then the southernmost site is the site where the gospel today took place. Because John went into the desert, it's closer to the Dead Sea. It's not as clean that far south. But there was also Ethiopian right Christians who were there and there were actual baptisms taking place. Children were being baptized, an adult was being baptized there at that site. And it's interesting because this is also the place where when the Israelites came from Egypt, they crossed the desert for 40 years, and finally they arrive at the Promised Land. And it's there that Moses dies before entering the Promised, promised Land but it is Yeshua, Joshua, who is going to lead them across the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And so this is the location where the baptism of our Lord took place. Well, Jesus, his name in Hebrew is, is Joshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. And so he is a new Joshua who is leading the people not just into this promised land of earth, but to the promised land of heaven. He's that 
he fulfills everything. Everything is recapitulated in him. Everything that took place with the chosen people is now being fulfilled, completed in Jesus Christ. So he is that new Joshua, Yeshua, who is leading the people across the Jordan River, if you will, into the promised land, not just of this earth, but of heaven. And here we have another manifestation, an epiphany, as we celebrated Epiphany Sunday yesterday. This is another manifestation of the Blessed Trinity. And so we see the Father saying, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Spirit descends on him in the form of a dove. And you have our Lord then beginning his public ministry. And fittingly, he begins with 40 days, which reminds us of the 40 years of the desert of the chosen people before he begins then his public ministry. So he goes not because he needs to be purified, but because he will sanctify the waters of the Jordan River, of the waters of, of the earth. He will sanctify them by his presence, by his own baptism. He shows his solidarity with sinners. He comes for our sake, and he shows us the way to salvation. You know, the church knows of no, no other means other than baptism for salvation. We know that God's not limited to the sacraments. He can operate as he wills, and yet the church has not been given any other means by which we know we are to be saved and to have that life of heaven. And when we are baptized, something similar to what happened to Jesus in the Jordan River happens to us. The heavens are open to us. So now we are co-heirs with Christ of eternal life in heaven. That we too become beloved sons and daughters of the Father. We can truly say in a new, deeper, and richer way, our Father. And so that's what takes place during the baptismal rite, is that we pray that prayer, our Father. We become sons and daughters with whom he is well pleased. And the Spirit descends upon us too. You know, something is different about those who are baptized. There's something different about them. There's more peace. There's more joy, there's a light of glory, there's a beauty, there's love, there's hope, there's faith that's alive, that's given in the gift of baptism. So it's not just some ceremony, but because God, knowing that we are both body and soul, he gives us these physical means by which he communicates divine life to us. And so water, we use it to wash. We use it to wash. And so the pouring of water reminds us that we are being cleansed of our sins in baptism or have been cleansed by baptism of original sin and our own, any personal sins we may have committed. But also Jesus speaks of the living water of the Holy Spirit. And so there's like this new divine life that's being given to us. So again, God knowing that we are physical creatures, with the spiritual soul, gives us these physical means, the sacraments, in which he can communicate divine life to us. You know, we, we know of this even on a natural level. We use things to symbolize and to communicate something else. Saturday night, I was talking with a young lady who uh, told me that her boyfriend had asked her on the Feast of the Holy Family if she'd like to pray, you know, after the Mass, just spend some time praying in the church for a little while, something that they commonly did. She said yes. And so there was a woman who was vacuuming there in the church. He said, how long is she going to be here? Because this young lady works at the parish. Well, she'll be here for a little while, so he waited till she was further back in the church. And he said, I have something I want to say to you. Proposed to her, gives her the ring. And she was delighted to tell me all these different details of what had taken place. And this ring was symbolizing his, his desire 
to give himself to her and that she might respond in turn to his love. So his initiative of love, waiting for her, her response, and this physical element like a, a ring is something to communicate that, that we will be bound together. Well, God does something similar too in the sacraments. So these physical means are his initiative toward us, waiting for our response, to respond in faith. And we know that baptism is something that's not merited. You know, we don't earn baptism, we don't earn this. It's something that's a gift of God's love, it's an invitation. And that's why we too baptize children. Because parents make decisions for their infants, for their physical welfare. So no parent would say, well, I don't, I just let them eat whatever they want, you know. No, I know what's going to be best for my little infant. They can't make those decisions, can't even feed themselves at this point. So I want them to have what's necessary for their physical flourishing. Well, how much even more so parents should want that for their spiritual flourishing of their children, to have this gift of divine life already given to them. And it will be later in adult life, well, they will renew that commitment that was made for them by their parents in the faith of the church. It will be later every Easter that's something we all choose to do, don't we? To renew our baptismal promises, to renounce Satan and all of his works and empty promises, and to profess anew our faith in God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that we, we renew that covenant that God has given to, that he's made with us. It's his initiative that he has given to us. I remember early on, as a priest, a young priest, this uh, family was brought to me and they were Vietnamese and they didn't speak any English. And there were a number of obstacles that they had to being able to come into the church. They wanted very much to come into the church. They'd never received any of the sacraments. And fortunately, they were able to find this Vietnamese priest who had patiently instructed them in the faith. And I was invited because I had come to know this family to go over to St. Francis Xavier, which is near here, for their baptism and confirmation and reception of their first Holy Communion. And they were just in tears. They were weeping tears of joy. You know, we who have been cradle Catholics, who were baptized as children, sometimes we take for granted the divine gifts that have been given to us. And it's often those who come in later who didn't know of the gift of the sacraments, the gift of divine life that God wants to give to us, that especially show us the treasure that we have that is ours in the gift of the sacraments. And baptism opens the door to all the sacraments. You know, God proves his love for us that he gives us the sacraments throughout our lives to assist us with divine life and divine help. But baptism is that first sacrament of initiation. That initiation into Christ is to be completed and consummated in the Eucharist. That's where that complete initiation, that complete drawing close to Christ and he to us uh, is fulfilled. And that's our privilege this morning at this Holy Mass to just renew once and again as he renews with us this covenant, this is a covenant in his blood. And we are here because we want to renew our covenant. That baptism has opened the door to this sacrament of the gift of the Holy Eucharist. So my brothers and sisters, let us be grateful this day that the Lord has shown his solidarity with us sinners. That he goes first through the waters to show us that way to salvation so that we too can have his divine life in us, so that have the heavens are open for us. We become co-heirs with Christ, that we become too the beloved sons and daughters of the Father, his adopted children, that the Spirit comes upon us too and pours out his gifts 
this divine life that is given to us in the gift of baptism. <laughs>